on the weekly head coaches show for football with Paul Gorham. Once again, we're in the conference room because things are rolling now for the Pioneer football team, two in a row, and very probably their most complete effort of the year at Central Connecticut State University this past weekend. 37-24, Pioneers come from behind and win. So many good things about this win, Coach. Uh, you take into consideration that it had been seven years since you had beaten CCSU. They hadn't lost, I believe, since 2004 when old, holding a halftime lead. And, of course, they were the preseason coaches pick to win the NEC. So all that combined, talk about what this win means. Um, it was just great for the kids, you know, having the opportunity to uh, compete against a team like that on the road. Um, we played with a lot of emotion and, and uh, did some uh, did a lot of good things on both sides of the ball. So it was an exciting day for us. Well, both sides of the ball and special teams as well. Special teams was really big. I guess let's talk defense first and Chris Mandis, who is named the NEC Defensive Player of the Week. 12 tackles and one of five very big turnovers that you forced for the Blue Devils. A big forced fumble in the fourth quarter. Kind of a game-changing, momentum-swinging fumble, but just talk about him and the defense and how hard they were hitting him in uh, the town, I guess they, they call it hard hit in New Britain. You guys were the hard hitters, though, forcing five fumbles. Yeah, well, it worked out that way, but it was physical on both sides. They were, they were coming after us pretty well. Um, Chris has been a great leader for us and named the captain of the team pretty much unanimously before the season started, and, and uh, he played great. Played great, inspirational, uh, both in the locker room uh, and with, uh, with his play. So um, he deserved the award that he, he won this week. Let's switch it over to special teams now because everything uh, kind of goes together, you know, those those three elements of the game. And you put some real pressure on their punter to give you very good field position for the game-tying touchdown, I believe it was, the very next play after they only got off a 13-yard punt. Little to Rossi, game tied. Just talk about what that meant for the team to do it on the very first play after a great special teams play. Yeah, you usually want to hit them after something like that, you know, try and take a shot um, and hope they're a little bit disorganized. Uh, and, you know, the kid mishandled the snap a little bit and, and gave us the opportunity to short field. Um, and it was a good opportunity to take a shot. And uh, Timmy did a great job reading. I, I didn't think he was going there. We had another... Uh, Richie wasn't necessarily the primary guy and threw a great ball, and, and Richie made an outstanding catch, and it just uh, created a lot more energy than we already had going into that point. And then your punting game, uh, you know, Rob Shepard had a 52-yard boomer and a couple times pinned the Blue Devils inside the 20. It really put, gave the defense a position to have success, again, uh, on the other side of special teams. Yeah, it was huge. I think he had four inside the 10. Uh, well, the 15-yard line, and any time, you know, the percentages say uh, they have to go 80, 90 yards. It's, it's, uh, it goes down dramatically, um, the percentage of being able to score, and it, and it lets them uh, get an opportunity to make, make more mistakes, and, and that's what they did. Uh, the more they had to grind it out, they had ended up turning the ball over, and, and we got short fields and were able to finish them off late. Greg Moore, last week it was uh, Kishada Spence. He kind of arrived on the scene and had that memorable homecoming game. Greg Moore has a hundred and uh, exactly 100 all-purpose yards uh, on Saturday against CCSU, including two touchdowns. So uh, I, I guess spreading it out again and different guys on any given week are contributing. How about Greg Moore this past week? Yeah, Greg was outstanding and, and gave us a great spark. Um, you know, he's just uh, – he's not big, but he's very dynamic. And, and uh, whenever he does something, the you know, the whole team responds to it in, in a different way than Kashadis and – um, he's he you know he could hang with those guys athletically and and it was just a great shot in the arm for us. Okay, so Columbia this week and uh, you guys got to be feeling pretty good after two great wins. One, uh, it came down to the last play, and then like we said, this past CCSU game, uh, in all three elements of the game, a, a complete effort. How's the team feeling going into Columbia? Um, we just got through practice today and and we were all right. We weren't great. Um, we need to be better tomorrow. We already spoke to him about that. Um, Columbia is going to be a great challenge for us. Those kids are they're motivated, driven, uh, obviously bright kids, and, and going on the road again. Uh, that was our first shot at it this year up in New Britain. Um, hopefully we handle it as well, maybe a little bit better. You know, we got down 14 to nothing last week, and, and uh, you're not always going to be able to come back from that. So uh, I'd like to play better uh, from start to finish and, and hopefully get another W. All right, good luck. Go get them this week and uh, keep rolling. Great, thank you. Paul Gorham, head coach of the Sacred Heart Pioneers on the Paul Gorham Weekly Coaches Show. The Pioneers are back to 500, 2-2. Two two. They're going for the momentum from New Britain to New York City Saturday afternoon against Columbia, looking to get to 3-2.